Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Mario Nawfall X Spaces. Hello and good day. You are here live and early for another crypto daily show talking about is October still coming? Question mark. Big question mark today. We're going to put together a panel of speakers for your crypto conversation today. I'm Pulse Digital, one of your co-hosts, along with Travis Wright today. And we're going to moderate this panel that's put together with experts from around the, the world. Let's do it. I love this panel. We got a bunch of awesome people. So let's throw this out. Is is October still on the way or we're going to be in October? Which one Which one is it, guys? You got a question just, or an answer, throw up your hand and we'll uh, we'll know how to, or just jump on in. It's good with us. Yeah, I'll start it off. Um, look, I, I think, you know, we, we uh, batted this around last time. I'm <clears throat> cautiously bullish. You know, I think we got to follow the money. Yeah, looking at uh, the VC action right now, um, not too sure how it's shaped up for Q3, but uh, you know we've had uh, we've had over uh, almost four billion, uh, over four billion now of funding for uh, Web3 startups. Um, you know, I, I think um, you know I, I think the U.S. is still where the liquidity uh, the liquidity is. It's been the dominant uh, dominant hub for these investments, and um, everything that I'm seeing right now, the VCs are still aping in. So that's uh, still still getting me bullish. We'll see what happens with. Uh, with Gensler, with the ETFs and all that, but not to go too much into macro, just follow the VC money, I'm bullish, cautiously. Cautiously, gotta follow the VC money, that is for sure. And, you know, looking at the markets, it's been interesting, you know, just around AI. So it looks like over the last three, four days, AI tokens have plunged about $5 billion in market cap. Uh, so that's kind of crazy what's happening with that. Any idea of, of why this might be might might be popping off? Acequisition, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think September, October is typically always a risk off uh, period. But if you're finding the right companies, uh, whether it's a VC firm, whether it's crypto, you know, we're going to talk about a great company shortly, um, then it doesn't really matter. And, you know, we're, we're already halfway through October nearly, so... Whew. Crypto time moves fast, y'all. I mean, especially crypto plus AI is definitely. Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, Sheldon here from 3D. Uh, so I've been, uh, you know, perhaps one of the biggest players in Canada in the gold space for, for 20 years. And the whole thesis is U.S. dollar decline, you know, hard assets, gold and Bitcoin up. And if you look at a lot of the smart money that's moving right now, whether it's BlackRock, which manages trillions, and they're basically projection is, you know, the U.S. dollar has begun its decline and everybody's got to own a piece of Bitcoin and they're trying to put it in every portfolio. So you just look at where the big, big money is. Ray Dalio, same thing. Elon, everybody is realizing that, you know, the debt that's being created on a daily basis in America is unsustainable. And uh, where do you go uh, if you don't want that, you're not going to go to the Chinese yuan, not transparent, the euro messed up. It's going to be gold and it's going to be Bitcoin. So it's all going to be, I think, moving into the into the hard asset side. And certainly uh, companies that we've looked at in terms of the value proposition in, in crypto or crypto like technology, uh, you really have to look at where's the value, where's, you know, and, and that's why we want to introduce, for example, our micropayments company and so forth, which we think is has really been cracking the code. So um, we have a bunch of company. We have over 60 companies in 3D. We're heavily in the Web3 crypto side. Um, we also have maybe the world's largest natural hydrogen discovery, and that's why we brought um, our founder and uh, CEO on for this call. Um, so we've got a lot to talk about. Um, I'll, I'll let you guys curate the call, but you know, we're we're very focused on the areas that I've, I've just spoken about. The conversation about gold is interesting because it wasn't even two weeks ago we were talking about all-time highs on gold and, and the reasoning why that was still happening because usually we're in spaces and people are talking about, you know, Bitcoin is the new hedge against inflation, but you can't have these conversations without having them in parallel. Um, when, when you're having conversations with people about the two, though, it's interesting to talk about how they're both. He considered them. Were you calling up hard assets, Sheldon? You consider them both, even though Bitcoin is software or whatever, you, stay, you still call them hard assets when you're talking to people? Yeah, basically, you know, what it really has to do is scarcity of resource, maybe, is 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 maybe a better definition. But uh, something that's, you know, yeah, I, I think that you can consider it intellectual property of a currency. 
and basically limited supply, no debt associated with it. So it meets the criteria in, you know, the same thing like art, you know, art is, is, is also a physical asset um, and, and it has no debt against it. So, you know, it, 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 there's a few different definitions of it, but I think Bitcoin is definitely in the, in the currency equation. Love that. Hey, William, you got your hand up, bud? Yeah, so when we talk about gold, which I, I am a fan of gold, I mean, look, let's not forget, we have a administration potentially coming in that has been batting around the concept of unrealized capital gains, right? Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's going to obviously be a disaster for the United States if that happens. But, um, you know, holding gold in, in those types of situations um, I think it definitely has advantages over a lot of other things that, you know, the government can can say, OK, hey, you know, pay us money now, even though you, you haven't sold. Um, let's hope that doesn't happen. But I think if it does, it's absolutely going to have enormous negative impact for crypto. Is this maybe a more of a reason why you would have physical gold over paper gold? Because a lot of people mm. hold lots of paper gold. That could be tracked and you could go, oh, they own this much and you can be taxed based on how much paper gold you have. But if you have physical gold that you're holding, they don't know how much you have. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, but the other aspect is, too, and, you know, I'm, I'm very close to Eric Sprott, who's maybe one of the biggest uh, gold players in the world. He doesn't believe paper gold is backed by physical, um, that it's been lent out and to all the derivative players led by J.P. Morgan. So I think people have to be very careful. Now, that's um, as uh, juxtaposed to owning, say, uh, shares in, in gold companies that have, you know, uh, resources in the ground. So, you know, that can be called paper gold, but I, I would have more confidence in that than, you know, sort of some of these uh, derivatives where you think that there's a claim and that it's backed by, by physical gold. There, it's, it's, it's somewhat controversial. That is exactly, that is, I've been talking about that for years. I think it's like a comics play or something, right? And I, and I don't remember which one has the most paper, but I know that um, gold uh, and silver, one of them has like for every one physical ounce of gold or, or silver, there's like 500 paper ounces. And then the other one is like 250 ounces ish for every physical thing. So like that is way beyond fractional reserve banking and how, how bad that system is they have they have basically inflated the supply of gold and silver by so much that a real physical ounce should be two to five hundred times the price of what it is right now right well they say that certainly about silver there's 300 million naked short ounces of silver and that's why uh, you know some of the projections go into the hundreds of dollars of where silver uh, might ultimately land so there is short squeezes that are probably going to occur at some point, depending on the counterparty's ability to carry the margin and and uh, uh, you know those those short positions. So it's an you know let's just say the bias to the upside. And I think that every time you try to bet on timing, you know you're vulnerable. So you know the idea is to you know take a position, add over time, but uh, don't fight the clock. Uh, but we're extremely bullish on. On hard metals, um, you know, we have a lot of exposure in 3D. Um, we're we're very deep in 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 technology that's related to, and we believe that you know AI with the right application and companies like it. There's you know, and and if you have look at the intersection of AI and and crypto or or, or quantum computing, another company that we have that basically does quantum without hardware. A uh, company called Dynex. We believe that you know those are also going to be like major game changers. Uh, we talked about uh, Tota Q, which I'd love Hassan to sort of give you guys a snippet. Um, they've just been bear hugged by Google and Oracle to launch uh, together with two major Canadian banks. They've cracked the code on fractional, uh, basically payments. So six billion people of eight billion people on planet Earth can't afford subscriptions. So they want to be user fee based, but the cost per transactions has been prohibitive. But this new TOTA protocol that TOTA Q is built on is unlimited scalability and cost per fr transaction fractions of a penny. So we believe that, yes, you can look at the hard assets and look at the market, but these are deflationary, um, let's say, technologies that uh, are going to have massive scalability 
and are also great growth areas. So, you know, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, but, you know, it'd be very interesting, I think, for your listeners to to listen to us on for, uh, you know, a minute or so. Yeah, no, awesome. Thanks, uh, Sheldon. And, and just kind of picking out from some of the themes and the conversation from looking at AI. Yeah, we're crypto adjacent. So all decentralized, there's cryptography in it, uh, but just think a totally different tech style. I won't dive into it, but maybe what I'll do is I'll just start and leave everyone with a couple of user or customer experiences that are very, very different, but you can kind of put yourself in the, in, in the, in the shoes of the user. So one experience is you just go to any app or any website and you see any kind of entertainment content. It could be something you're reading. It could be a sports uh, video. Um, it could be a, a service. It could be a game, just any kind of entertainment content. And you're sick of subscriptions. And you just show up and you tap and pay for it. And maybe the price of the thing is a tenth of a penny. Uh, maybe it's hundreds of dollars. The platform gets paid in three seconds. And then it turns around and pays its whole supply chain, whether they're part of that organization or not, in the next three seconds. So what would normally be weeks or months and all kinds of back office and risk and cost, it just disappears. It's just systems and devices paying and verifying with each other directly. Um, on the AI side, what we're doing uh, as an example with Oracle and some other companies is we're combining our tech with their AI so that the AI can transact. Um, most, peop most people here have probably experienced or even just heard of AIs are helping with conversational search, recommendations, generating things. Um, but in this case, by adding the micropayments, the AI can close sales. So you could show up to a movie site and say, hey, I'd like to watch whatever the game, you know, involving that team from down south, you know, uh, a week ago, and it pops it up. And then it just taps and pays. And then the AI turns around and it pays both teams, the league, the OTT provider. Um, and that solves a big problem as well on the AI side. Uh, one of the things I was talked about right at the beginning of the call was, you know, just a bit of the, uh, you know, the, the downturn within AI. And part of that is just caused by the massive amount of costs that it takes to train and run these models. Um, so this is a bit of fuel that makes it very, very easy to monetize any kind of AI algorithm. While you guys have been hanging out and talking about all this, I've also been going through the website and checking out the comments, as Travis said. I appreciate all the stuff you guys are doing. This is a great conversation. Uh, I appreciate Sheldon and everybody pulling up. If anybody has any questions uh, for Sheldon and these guys, remember, you can still raise your hands. We've got one or two speaker spots uh, we might be able to fill up, too. Um, and then, and then just, just, on, just on my end, from a uh, kind of an investor's point of view looking in, uh, I'm kind of a serial investor, now a shareholder, and have been for a while now, 3D Capital. I uh, host a YouTube channel. I've, I've dived into the, the company uh, on, on, on a number of occasions. Uh, in, in my pin post, you can you can see that. I used to work alongside my father in investing and building building a, a different public company. And when he passed away, I was looking for the basically the next uh, epic home run investment. And uh, 3D fit the bill quite nicely. They're a family run office. They you know they have a number of projects, diversified VC fund exactly everything that I look for when investing and, 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 and crucially looking at things at a discount to what already exists rather than hope and hype. I mean, that's all, that's all that can come later after you have looked at a, at a project. I typically like to look in and go, okay, is this trading at a discount to assets and fair value and audited accounts? And then I go, and do they have a growth story? And I think 3D t do have that to an absolute, absolute T and then they prove it by buying back their, uh, own shares and uh, stock as well. Hope and hype. You just you just you just described the whole crypto market. I think Quebec, Quebec Mining Group. I see you. I see you got your hand up. Yeah, and and we were just talking about it. You know, a couple of days ago, me and Sheldon and Jackson were talking about the power. Who's going to power all this AI? You know, and that's a really important element in the conversation here. You know, you need basically a tremendous new energy source to power all this AI, all the data centers, everything that's coming up on that AI revolution. And so, Sheldon, yeah. you want to mention a little bit about that, about the hydrogen? Yeah. So, um, well, just to, you know, it's our first time on this show. So I just want to introduce 3D Capital. You know, people call us the sort of arc 
ARC financial model, disruptive model for, for startups. And that's what I've done before at a company, Pine Tree Capital. Started at 10 cents with the shares. We exited at $26. And we had many, many uh, billion plus dollar exits from companies that we began. So our portfolio today is on is this basically same premise where they're all startup companies. We get involved at the earliest point, whether it's crypto, whether it's resources, we then help build those companies out of our office in Toronto, which we have an, a, an accelerator model. We do uh, partnerships amongst these companies, but we've been stealth for seven years and we've just come out um, basically earlier this year, created a YouTube channel, as Hector mentioned. So you can go to our YouTube and see all these interviews with our founders. And, and we have a we have a comparable to uh, Elon's Neuralink called Neurable, which we think it's non-invasive, which we can talk about here in a moment as well. But the company that we stumbled upon is Hydrogen. And this was before that I built a major oil company in the 80s for a life insurance company here in Toronto. So I have a big background in, in sort of the hydrocarbon space, but I never realized up until eight months ago that you can actually find natural hydrogen in the soils, in the ground. Hydrogen is the holy grail because of the zero CO2 footprint that it has. And most hydrogen was produced by technology, which was very capital intensive and you need a lot of IP. Well, we found this company uh, called QIMC, Quebec Innovative Materials. Q actually, QIMC is the ticker symbol. They basically had been working on this asset by partnership with the Quebec government for six years. And they believe that Northern Quebec will become the Saudi Arabia of hydrogen. But we weren't sure and we made an investment. And then they suddenly had a discovery. After that discovery, Bill Gates came out with Bezos and said, we think this is the future of energy revolution. And we put $300 million into a company. Since then, the Saudis have announced a massive hydrogen plant to produce 600 kilograms, 600 million kilograms a year. Australia's putting 50 billion. Everybody is going into natural hydrogen. And we believe that we have the first mover advantage and that we're perhaps the most advanced. So this, as John says, will become the source of energy, we believe, for, for data centers, uh, you know, to create AI compute. So I'll, I'll introduce John. Maybe he can just give a brief, you know, this is probably the most, I've, I've started hundreds of companies in my career, and I've never had a project where the NAV is like this project, the net asset value, because hydrogen does not deplete, it repletes. So unlike oil and gas, when you take it out of the ground and you, you know, you deplete the reservoir. No, it through its caustic reaction of rocks and water, every time you take the hydrogen out, it reproduces itself. So this will never, never uh, um, deplete away. And so this, this is something that I have never seen in my career. And, and we think that this is, this could be the Holy grail. So John, why don't you, uh, well, real quick, comments. real quick, I, I, uh, Sheldon, I'm really curious. Like, where is the hydrogen coming from? Where are you guys, where is that pulling from? Well, well, Travis, yeah, so it's naturally created, Travis. Hydrogen could be anthropo-created, you know, with green hydrogen and all those different hydrogen colors where you zap water with a massive amount of electricity, take out the O and you're left with the H2. Mm -hmm. In our instance, we have such a unique unicorn geological setting that the hydrogen itself is naturally created with between the interaction of the rocks, the water, the electrolysis. I don't want to say electrolysis, but there's a geochemical reaction and then natural hydrogen just seeps up into the surface. Hmm. That's fascinating. Oh, it's unbelievable. And if you look at it, going back to, to Sheldon's point, you know, uh, green hydrogen or man-made hydrogen costs between eight to fifteen dollars a kilo for extraction. In our case, extraction is less than a dollar a kilo. So that opens what? just a, that, yeah, it just in, opens. That is insane. Well, Travis, it's comparable to basically. That's why. That's why you know it's mentioned as the Saudi Arabia. You know, the Saudis have oil. We have hydrogen in a geopolitically safe jurisdiction, location, 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 infrastructure in place. All the elements here 
are in place and it's a 300 i'll use a canadian term square kilometer district so it's a massive district play a valley of hydrogen basically natural hydrogen and also renewable hydrogen you know uh we visited the asset last week all the team went up there and we spent a week with the guys at INRS, which is basically the Quebec's government's uh, research institute. And, uh, and what we saw there, the geophysics, the soil sampling, uh, everything is there just indicates to you the, the type of district discovery that we have in place here. And that's all natural renewable hydrogen. You know, that's why they use the term gold hydrogen in this instance. They use the term um, holy grail. Um, why? Because there's no CO2 emissions. Absolutely none. You know, John, that's, that's really it's really interesting because I just saw a documentary the other day called Dirty Coin. And it's all about, you know, big the people have said, oh, Bitcoin's bad. It uses way too much energy. It's a horrible resource. But when you go down to it, and this documentary is really good. I highly recommend you guys go get a chance to go go see it if it's near near where you are. And uh, it talks about some of these things and how they were using really unique sources of energy to help mine their Bitcoin. One I thought was really cool was they would go to landfills and they would, you know, put these sort of uh, mats over the top of it and collect all the methane that was being burned. And then they would track that over to a thing and they would use that energy to mine Bitcoin. So is this something where, where you guys could literally take some Bitcoin miners in like a in like a big storage container, plop those up there and use that hydrogen to mine your Bitcoin easily? Okay. Well, of course, because all the infrastructure is in place, Travis, you know, uh, like the best comparable I could give you here is Total, which is that big French energy oil and gas company. They've uh, they've spent millions of dollars in the Pyrenees Mountains trying to discover what we have in Quebec, in northern Quebec, and only a five hour drive from Toronto, you know. So I just want to let you know the U.S. military is now on their way to come confiscate. <laughs> all your I, just, I just got the text. <laughs> well, well, listen, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of let me tell you something, Travis, you know, for for the size of our company and the work that we've put here, we've been getting calls from a lot of big, big players here. You know, uh, we've been getting calls from Japanese trading houses, Japanese government, uh, you know, U.S. majors, you know, uh, you know, Gates Foundation. Like there's a lot, a lot of guys right here who are really, really interested in this discovery because it's a very, very unique and like, a, you know, it's a very unique unicorn type of discovery because we are so fortunate of the geology that we have in this discovery, you know? So and I got to ask the question because the, the sun ahead. is also a thing. <laughs> How do we compare all this to solar? Because so many people are saying solar is the, the thing for AI. Solar is the thing for Bitcoin mining. What are the comparisons? Well, well Pulse, the, be the beauty of it is don't forget the environmental footprint. You know, solar wind farms, you know, that's the big dis disadvantage for example, is the footprint, you know? Um, in this instance, given it's natural hydrogen that is extracted from the ground up, you just need an oil well. Simple as that, you know? Yeah, and, and John, if I could add Jackson here, uh, you know, VP Investments at 3D, working with uh, Sheldon here. Um, you know, uh, unlike, uh, you know, uh, solar, uh, hydrogen from the ground can be 24-7. When you're dealing with solar and wind, what happens if it's a cloudy day? You need now battery storage. You need, you know, enough day, uh, storage to, to, to run these data centers at, at night. And so you don't have a reliable, continuous stream like you would have from from underground. I mean, it's really a new primary source of energy that is, you know, in in all equivalent ways, you know, oil and gas, but without the the CO two footprint. And as uh, Sheldon mentioned, it it regenerates. So you have basically a, an endless supply, and you can basically have twenty four seven uh, uh, service of it. And the reason that uh, people have gone to solar is because there were no alternatives. And if you look at all the data and all the literature. Um, hydrogen is the holy grail, but what is the footprint? So when you make solar panels, you're still got, what energy do you spend 
making them. Um, and, and, you know, whether it be metals or glass or whatever it is in terms of the byproducts. So every country in the world is basically saying, if you can do hydrogen, but even when you do natural hydrogen, you spend CO2. It's like the olden days of ethanol, where you spent some more money uh, creating ethanol than, you know, it was really just a subsidized investment. In many cases, solar is subsidized. This is a game changer. It's all happened in the last six months. This is very new. And when you find commercial quantities, you can you can power uh, AI data centers. You can uh, you can basically you can turn hydrogen into ammonia, which is for fertilizer. You can turn it into methanol. You can basically put it direct drive into vehicles. The first vehicles that are starting to be uh, fit with hydrogen or long haul trucking because they're on the road 12 to 18 hours a day. So this is absolutely exploding. And if you Google every day the hydrogen articles, there this is a revolution. This is game changer. And we're very lucky because John had the foresight to get involved in these projects in Quebec in 2022. But it was the Quebec government that has done all the research. They're a technical, they're all G PhDs. And they basically said, these are the best rocks and environment for creating natural hydrogen anywhere in Canada and perhaps North America. So um, th this, this is gonna be a really interesting situation. And why I bring it up as sort of the top is that because everything we've been involved in, like TOTAQ, it's been a seven year evolutionary cycle of developing the tech stack, the market being right and so forth. This was a project that we stumbled upon, made a very quick decision. It's one of over 60 investments in 3D and we think is, is game changing. The value, especially as I said, because when you have the rocks uh, in, uh, interact with the water to create hydrogen, hydrogen's the lightest element. It comes to surface and we were able to measure the, the amount of hydrogen that came through the ground into the air. And we've had the best results of any company that's ever tested this. So whatever we find literally captured at surface, we believe is tied to reservoirs beneath the ground. And we believe they're very shallow. So mm -hmm. our, our costs, we think this is a game changer. And, and that's why, you know, even though this is, you know, a crypto platform that we thought this is so important for data centers and AI that we wanted to bring this up, you know, first to people to to look at and there's a lot of data that we've published on this and it's and it's going to be a, a really great evolving story that's great well we appreciate that sheldon so what, what correlation does it have with crypto are you taking this hydrogen and tokenizing it in some way because our audience is full of a bunch of dgens they want we want to know how can we 100x and 1000x our money based on this information so what's going on with the blockchain crypto side of things with what you're doing there at 3D that could that could benefit the audience? Well, you know, listen, we think that, first thing, we think the company itself will probably go up a hundred times. Uh, but in addition, uh, we believe we'll, we'll probably help sponsor creating data centers in, in Quebec that will that will use, uh, use our hydrogen. But tokenization, absolutely, uh, of our resource. We've thought about it. We have not put any plans into effect yet. But um, we think that there's definitely a correlation there. We believe that this is this is going to unlock whether it be you know a Bitcoin miners that want a very very uh, low cost source of energy. It's going to be it's going to start replacing you know in many cases electricity, um, nuclear. We think that this is this is the biggest explosion of a new energy source ever because it can be found in its natural format. So. Um, Stay tuned. Uh, we only made our discovery six weeks ago, and and wow. it's, it's mind-boggling. Uh, I like tell you I what, said, you just convinced me, Sheldon. I'm no longer a degen. I'm now a hydrogen. <laughs> no, yeah. but but yeah. Travis, what what's really interesting too, Travis, is just the amounts of carbon credits you get with a deal like this, Travis. You know, just in California, the carbon credits, in Quebec, the carbon credits that you get from, from a simple extraction here. And the beauty of it is the cost of extraction. That's yeah. the big advantage of natural hydrogen. The cost yeah. of extraction that opens just 
so many doors in terms of what you're going to do with that product after that you know when you get the japanese trading houses calling you you know on a weekly basis asking for them to buy the production already it just gives you a sign of how much people and these big majors are going so downstream and so quickly for this yeah so i know travis that uh, that uh, i guess there's about 10 minutes left and i know when uh, we came on you wanted us to talk about a couple other companies so i'm going to have jackson uh speak about um uh, a crypto uh quantum computing company that we think is is going to be 100x called dynex and then we can talk a little bit about neurable uh which is a Neuralink. Uh, commercial company launching this month. So, Jack? Yeah, no, happy, happy to talk about real, real. I'm so sorry, real quick to cut in just on the green hydrogen part. Is it okay if I send you a DM to the 3D Capital account? Very interesting talk. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Both on the mining side and the, on the green hydrogen, I'm trying to help uh, organize it for like internationally to bring it also uh, in talks with our government. So I'm going to drop you the image. Sure. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no. Um, and so, yeah, so happy to talk a bit about uh, first uh, Dynex, which uh, does have a token uh, and, and is traded and, and can be you know bought currently. Uh, this was really interesting. A, a 3D shareholder showed us this this opportunity. We looked into it, met with uh, or, or spoke with management and uh, very unique uh, where they basically have figured out a way using traditional GPUs to to emulate quantum computing um, algorithms and get efficiencies uh, greater than quantum computers. So in other words, you don't need, you know, super cooled hardware to uh, do quantum calculations uh, on very, very expensive machines. They have figured out a way to basically in a decentralized format, leveraging uh, 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 over 100,000 GPUs um, to, to be able to, to do these quantum calculations that are faster than D-Wave, if people know D-Wave, Wave or IBM's quantum computer, um, and so what? When uh, and and this is live. It's been live since December. They're working with Novartis, Telefonica, and many others, and have shown that they can save 90, 95 percent on both co cost and and compute for different optimization problems. And so um, this is you know something we're extremely excited about because it's a it's a very uh, unique and disruptive type of technology. It's live, uh, and they've you know basically uh, how you measure quantum computing. Is called a Q score. They had to create a new uh, a new score because they just blow blew every uh, other uh, quantum computing out of the water. And so, um, you know, if, if this was like a, a regular computer centralized, it would be one of the largest supercomputers in the world. And so, um, you know, we're, we're very bullish. Sheldon became an advisor. We're, we're it's another token in, in our portfolio. And so, we believe you know quantum computing now is accessible for the masses. And they have a self service model. People can check it out. They can play around um, and uh, they, they have a token that powers this. They also, um, instead of regular, they you know, have proof of work miners. They have what are called pro proof of useful work. So when someone, you know, tries and does does a job on their platform they and they, they pay a certain amount, that then is uh, used to, uh, uh, goes out to all the different GPU miners. And it's called proof of useful work because they're actually leveraging, using their GPUs on the Dynex platform, uh, which is a layer one protocol um, to, to to do these uh, um, calculations. And so the results have been amazing. They continue to update it. And uh, I, I strongly suggest people uh, follow uh, and uh, stay close to this company. So that's dynexcoin.org. Is that your website? It looks yes. like dynexcoin yeah. is the Twitter handle. It might not be. You guys have so many great projects, it sounds like, over there. You mentioned Neurable. Uh, we don't know what that is. You mentioned TotaQ. That's a whole other blockchain project. It looks like you guys are working yeah, on it. Yeah, we also like actually, have you back. Yeah, sometimes. we have another one called Hypercycle uh, as well, which right. is basically uh, creating the Internet of AI. So it's also built on the same protocol that TotaQ is, again, totally scalable. And it's a partnership with um, basically Singularity. And uh, we, we think that that also is uh, an extremely interesting one to look at. It, it also has a, as a token. Um, uh, HYPC, um, you know, and that's another rabbit hole we could always go down. Yeah. It sounds like we're going to have to have you guys back. By the way, one quick thing, uh, just to add on with uh, HyperCycle, SingularityNet, uh, and their ecosystem of AIs, is the underlying TOTA micropayments uh, technology. It, you can basically turn any asset, even a crypto one, 
into micro payable form so it's portable and it can start bouncing in between systems uh, free of the whatever blockchain it came from and then it can return to it. So what we're doing with uh, HyperCycle is we're basically allowing that HYPC crypto asset to, as an example, leave the Ethereum or the Stellar networks. It can start uh, transacting between the AIs uh, and later on kind of return home. So totally asset agnostic. And that's one of the things that then allows assets that are restricted in terms of getting into real world at scale use cases uh, to break free. Beautiful. All right. Let me just ask this, Sheldon, as we wrap in this bad boy up here, we just got a couple minutes left. Any final words that you would like our audience to know about what you guys are doing over there at 3D? Maybe where should they best connect with you so they can learn about all your portfolio projects? Because it sounds like you got your hands full over there. You've started hundreds of companies. Where where should people connect and what should people know about what, uh, what you're working on? Yeah, so listen, we're very happy to. We're extremely active. Um, we're, we're adding. Uh, we, got, we got some blockbuster crypto news, but we can't talk about it right now but everybody will be quite interested in Vol Sui. But um, basically, if they go to, if people want to go to our YouTube channel for 3D Capital, you'll see a, a splattering of, of our founders and CEOs talk about our companies like Neurable, um, which is going to change, you know, the cognitive brain to computer AI interface. And it's launching uh, literally this month. And Google Ventures is partners with us on that. So um, you can see some of them. You can follow 3D. You know, I put out social media, uh, um, let's call it disclosures daily of, that are relevant to what we're doing. And, you know, we're happy to speak to anybody um, just of what we're doing. We're actually a public company. Uh, our symbol is IDK. I don't know. Uh, it trades in the U.S. and in Canada. But um, we, uh, w again, I'm, I'm basically replicating what I did with Pine Tree Capital, which started at a 10 cents and went to $26. Um, and I think that uh, 3D will be bigger because in, in, in the era back then, there was no AI and there was no crypto. And I think that those are two of the biggest areas going forward. I appreciate so much that you guys brought 3D here because you're bringing up stuff that we don't always get to talk about, particularly the natural resources, and hydrogen, stuff like that. Travis and I do a lot of AI shows, so this is a refreshing conversation. However, we have run out of time. With as much as you brought, I wouldn't have expected to have gotten through all of it, and hopefully it leaves you guys wanting more if you're in the audience and you didn't get your fill on these subjects. That's why you should be following 3D and following all the accounts that we're already talking about it, which you are already doing because you already clicked on it, but this is your last reminder before we get out of here. Also, thanks to everybody that left comments down in the bottom right, approaching 300, which I appreciate. I was reading through those throughout the show. I appreciate all of you guys that came up as speakers, William and Adrian and Adrian and uh, Acequit and Hassan, everybody, Sheldon, thank you guys for making time to be here as part of the show. We we could not have shows without our guests. And then last, I always like to say thanks to Mario and the team at IBC, because we have a huge team of people that help us do this, like I mentioned, because Travis and I couldn't do this ourselves. And then Travis, before I get out of here, I appreciate you, my guy. This was a great conversation. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and I'll see you the next time we get together. Yeah, I love it. Thank you again so much, uh, 3D Capital. Love what you're doing. I've uh, sent out a LinkedIn request to you guys as well. I think you guys are doing some pretty cool stuff. I mean, if you guys can do hydrogen in such an awesome way to make everything cleaner, that's going to make a lot of people happier. So good luck with all of that. Thank you to the audience for tuning in. We really appreciate you and everybody, all the speakers in the panel. Much love to you guys again. And thank you, Pulse. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time on Amario Nolfault Twitter Space.